Hey everybody, it's James here with the Sawyer Family Reviews channel and ActionFeatures.net bringing you another one of these flashback reviews to an older Marvel Legend continuing on with the Wolverine slash Puck series today we're taking a look at Sabretooth is it worth going back and picking him up? let's find out! Alright, let's start things off with a look at Sabretooth in the packaging before we take a look at him loose, okay? Start things off, if you already watched the Emma Frost and Cyclops videos, some of this might be a little repetitive. I'm going to try and go through it really quick. Uh, at this time, back in 2012 when this figure was released, Hasbro had reintroduced the Marvel Legends line into stores. They were carded as opposed to the boxed figures we're seeing nowadays. Well, sort of carded slash boxed that we're getting nowadays. The packaging was not collector friendly, you had to cut open the bubbles and get the figures out. Uh, the regular waves, though, had dedicated art for the character you were buying, whereas all of the f all four of the Wolverine figures feature the same image of Wolverine and the Wolverine name up top. A lot of people refer to this as the Marvel Legends Wolverine wave. Some people call it the Marvel Legends Puck Build-A-Figure wave. Go either way. Down below, we've got the Marvel Legends logo and Sabretooth down below, and I'll knock it over for you. Make sure it's back in the focus. There we go. Sabretooth, a legacy in Weapon X. Regenerative powers. Ferocious strength. The Wolverine has met his match. We've just got an image of Wolver or sorry, Sabretooth over here, the figure there, and includes head to build Puck figure, which is the part number two. You'll need the Cyclops figure that has the arms, number one, and then the Emma Frost figure, even though the unproduced Rogue is shown on the back. You need her for the legs and torso, and then it includes Tales of Puck part two of three, which is a small insert with stories about Puck. All right, cool. Let's get me out of there. So now that Sabretooth's out, let's take a look at what all he comes with. Um, first of all, here is that Tales of Puck, number two of three. This is a little paper insert with a little story about Puck along the side. First of all, you've got the instructions for Puck. This is the third time we've looked at the instructions, so I think we should be able to game together without a problem. Hopefully I, I do it okay. Uh, and then along the side here is Tales of Puck two of three, Psylocke. X-Force has always been the team willing to take on missions no other heroes could handle. The team stays one step ahead using precision attacks on critical targets to eliminate evil before it strikes. As a new era dawns with Psylocke in command, Puck becomes one of the heroes who will carry on the X-Force legacy as a heroic hunter of evil. Read more in Uncanny X-Force number one. There you go. You've heard me talk about these old sheets before. It's an interesting idea. I just don't think we needed all this space over here for the the Puck instructions. I mean, come on. Maybe a couple comic panels of Puck, or a, a bio about Puck, or something like that. Next we have the Puck Head. This is it. This is the final piece of the puzzle for building Puck. I'm going to bring the other parts in that we've already assembled and pop that head on there. So that just pops right on like that. Satisfying little snap. And Puck is now fully built. I think the next video will either be on Puck himself, Let's do this, we'll bring them side by side. Or I will do a video um, of Wolverine first and then Puck, I don't know. It, you guys can leave a comment below and let me know what you'd rather see next, the full review of Puck or the review of Wolverine from this series. Do I even need to review Wolverine from this series? He's kind of not that great of a figure. It's a costume they haven't updated yet, but just let me know. Okay, let's get Puck out of there and take a look at Sabretooth. Sabretooth uses the Hyperion body, which is the body they've used also in the Apocalypse series Sabretooth. And I'll just bring him in now. We'll do a comparison of all these different Sabretooths in a minute. But this is the same body between these two Sabretooths. This release from the Puck series and this release from the Apocalypse series. Although this release has the uh, main and a different head. But it's the same body. Uh, I take that back. There is one slight difference. The Apocalypse series has the elbow spikes. And this one does not. This costume was his modern costume from this time period. I don't think this costume lasted very long. I, I think this is right when maybe he came back from the dead, maybe? I can't remember for sure. Uh, but this costume, I don't believe, lasted all that long. Uh, okay, let's do articulation, and then I'm going to do a close-up of the head, and then we'll do some comparisons. He's got ankles that hinge up and down, and then swivel. He's got that rocker on the ankle. He's got a bite, or I'm sorry, a mid calf cut that swivels all the way around 
a double knee joint that can go back to there. Then he's got a swivel at the top of the hip that goes all around. That's actually kind of tight. There is a little bit of color difference here. I'm going to back this up just a smidge. There is a little bit of color difference here between this part of the hip and this because it's two different kinds of plastic. This is that softer plastic and this is that harder kind. So you can kind of tell it under certain lighting. It's not that bad. Um, it's not like this is painted or something and the paint doesn't match. It's, it's a pretty close match, but it's not perfect. Then we've got hips that hinge out like that and then kick forward that much. Don't really kick back at all. So you get that much movement out of them. You've got a waist swivel that goes all the way around that has ratcheting. Then you've got an ab crunch that can go down to there and then back to there. And again, that's ratcheting. Then we've got shoulders that have that ratcheting kind of stoppy movement, but they go all the way around. They hinge up to there. And then we've got the bicep swivel, the double elbow joint, which can go, let's get, well, yeah, don't get a lot of movement because you've got that large bicep muscle. It goes to there. Then we've got rotation at the wrist and then hinges that go in and out. Then we've got a neck joint that can move down to there and then back to there. And then the head is mounted on a ball joint. It doesn't have a lot of side to side. It's got a little tiny bit and it's got rotation all the way around. There's no hindrance from the hair sculpt or anything like that. He's got a clean paint job overall. I especially like the nails being painted. He's got these fingerless gloves and the nails are painted with a dark brown. There's also a nice paint wash in his hair. This is one of the more detailed hair sculpts and paint work from this era of Marvel Legends. It's got this nice wash to the hair that gives it depth and it's just a nice overall sculpt on both the beard and the hair. But since we're talking about it, let's zoom in on it. Take a look at that head sculpt. It's just really sharp. I love the way the teeth are painted in here. It's very clean. He's got this almost pearlescent paint on his eyes with a a nice ring around them, almost like a dark blood red around the exterior of the eye. Um, I guess around the eyelids, you would say. I, I love the teeth sculpt and the way it's painted inside the mouth. It's really clean paintwork. And the beard, like I said, into the hair is a really nice sculpt. So if anything, this, this figure is a winner for the head sculpt. Let me bring this other saber tooth in here, and I think you can probably make them out side by side. I actually prefer this head sculpt to this head sculpt. This one's nice, I like the angry snarling look, but there's just this kind of subdued menace to this head sculpt that I really, really like. And we'll do a head switch in a second here so you can see them both together. It's, uh, it's pretty sharp. Let's take a look at some comparisons here. All right, before we get into the comparisons, I almost forgot to show you guys the height on this guy. Sabretooth stands right at about six and three quarters inches tall. His legs are a little on the wonky side right now. He, we've got this kind of warping going out this way. That's probably because he's been in this packaging for so long. He just now, I just now opened this figure. So I think a dip in warm water and then cold water will help those shape those back to what like this saber tooth is. He feels a little overall like more gummy in the legs than this saber tooth does, but I think that will help a lot, like getting that straightened out. Okay, I want to show you a head switch on these two guys. I think that, like I said, I, I really prefer this older head, and I think it's going to look pretty sharp on this Sabretooth's body. Let's put this on here. Yeah, it pops right on there. Oh, that looks awesome. I like that quite a bit. That's really cool looking. Yeah, that's cool. That may be the way I ended up displaying him. I like this more subdued look over this kind of angrier head, and since we got this right here, we'll put it on here. That kind of works too. Like I like that on this body and I like this on this body. That's, I think that's the way I'm going to display them. I think that looks pretty neat. Um, but for now, let's get this back off of here. I tried a second ago to film myself switching this mane off of one figure onto another. And I did fine switching it onto this older saber tooth, but then getting it back onto this one, I was fumbling for like five minutes and I'm like, well, I'm not leaving that in there. So I just started over. Um, so you can put this newer main piece onto this body because he's got those Hyperion holes in the back. And I think that looks cool too. I think, you know, this makes it look more like a, a nice combo of classic meets modern, but I think my preferred look is going to be this head on that old body. Uh, so we've already seen those two guys together. Let's see him next to a couple other Sabretooths. Here he is next to the Diamond Select or Marvel Select Sabretooth. 
you can see he's quite a bit bigger. If you're looking for a bigger, giant, like animated series style Sabretooth, how big he was to compare to the other characters, I would suggest you get this Marvel Select Sabretooth to put with your Marvel Legends, because he was huge on that cartoon. Sabretooth kind of changed sizes in the comics for a while there. He wasn't that big at first, and then when he got this costume, he was like humongous. And then he's kind of gone back and forth as far as size goes. Uh, here is a custom X-Force Sabretooth that I picked up on eBay. And that looks pretty, pretty sharp together. If I could put this mane back on this one, I'd give you all three together, but I'm not going to put the mane back on it. So you can kind of get the idea, sort of a evolution of, of Sabretooth. I think this was kind of his own interpretation of an X-Force Sabretooth suit. I don't even know if he ever wore that, but I thought it was really cool and looks cool with X-Force. Let's move these guys out of the way. Then we've got him here next to the Toy Biz Age of Apocalypse Sabretooth. You can see he's quite a bit bigger than him. This is kind of a short figure to begin with. And then we've got Brown Costume Wolverine from the Retro Wave with the Anthony's Customs head. And these two scale great together. I've, I've, you know, some people complain about the Hyperion body on Sabretooth, but I think it's great to scale with Wolverine. He's not overly big. Like I said, if you want a giant Sabretooth, get the Marvel Select version because you're not going to get much bigger than this from Marvel Legends unless it's a Build-A-Figure. And then we'll put also in here the Cyclops from the same wave. And since he's over here, we'll throw Puck over to the side. Let me get these all scooted so you can see them all. But there we go. Uh, I think overall, this is one of the better figures of the wave. I really like the head sculpt quite a bit. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this costume, but that head sculpt is phenomenal. Now, would I recommend picking up Sabretooth? That one's a tough question. It was kind of easier with Cyclops because it's not really that classic of an outfit. I don't know how much you really need this outfit. It's not one of the most classic looks, and you can get other figures and put money into those. For Sabretooth, we don't have a ton of Sabretooths and a lot of different unique looks. We've got pretty much the Apocalypse Wave and this guy from Hasbro. Um, so you've, you've only got a couple different looks for Sabretooth. So in that regard, it's not like you're going crazy picking up Sabretooth if you were to pick up another Sabretooth. I would definitely recommend him if you're building Puck overall, like if you're buying the parts to Puck anyway, you might as well get a carded Sabretooth and get this cool head out of the deal and throw it on another one. He's only like a $50 figure carded. Sometimes you can find him even a little bit cheaper if you shop around a bit. And he is a cool design. It's not the best design, but it's kind of cool. Uh, okay, so what should I do next, guys? Should I do Puck? Should I do the Wolverine from this wave? Should I move on to another Marvel Legend? I have a ton of X-Men guys that I haven't opened yet. Or should I do a Marvel Select figure? You let me know in the comments below. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. Um, please click like. Please click subscribe. Please click notify. Um, YouTube did this weird thing the other day where they eliminated a ton of comments on all my old videos. I don't know why they did it. So any comments you guys leave, I really appreciate it. Um, I don't know why they wiped them all out and I'm arguing with them to get them back. But So any new comments, I really appreciate it. Um, I like interacting with you guys, and I was really sad to see all those comments just disappear. Uh, yeah, okay, so I guess I'll see you guys next time.